Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel today. Um, I'm Sherry and today I want to show you um, Diamond Press's Fall Forest die set. Uh, I'm going to make a card with this and also use watercolors to show you how I'm going to do backgrounds and painting with it. So um, when it comes, it comes with the instruction sheet to show you how you can layer your dies up to make your create a beautiful scenery. And then they give you, uh, th this is all dies, no stamps. But I'm going to show you today also how I do a stamp to, so you can use the dies as stamps also. So they give you uh, three inspirations how to put together a card to get you your juices flowing for creativity. And when I get the uh, my my dies, I usually take them off the the carrier because the sticky tape. I have a hard time pulling it up. So I bought these magnetic sheets from Amazon. And I just put them on, restick them. That way, they're easy to put on and off, and easy to go that way. Uh, Diamond Press also gave a cutting folder and sticky adhesives um, that you put your uh, you you put your the rough side down, and then you scrape, scrape, and then. You peel it off and you can stick it on. And this is your scraper tool. And then this is an instructions on how to use it also. And I store mine in my folders, my die cut folders, with them labeled what they were. And they easily fit in here with no problem. And uh, just figure out, just show you how I did that. All right, let me get started. So, um, the watercolor set, the very first one that they had came with, uh, black and, uh, white watercolor paper. So that's what I'm going to use because, uh, this is an A2 size and these are cut at four and a quarter by five and a half. And that's what an A2 card size is. So... I'm gonna use this as my background, and I cut pre-cuts uh, the the dies that I wanted, and I'll show you then. But um, I'm gonna use this for my trees, and there's a side that is like smooth, and then there's a textured side. So I'm gonna use the textured side, and I'm gonna show you with uh, the marquees, because sometimes when you have a speed bump, like if you put this in straight in, uh, it won't cut correctly. So I'm going to take the new folder and show you how I, I put these in. Uh, I just put it on a little angle because you want to make sure that you're still staying um, in the folder line so it cuts. But it just has to be angled a little. And then I will run it through. And the cardstock or the watercolor paper, this is a little bit thicker than a regular cardstock. So, just to give you a little bit of heads up on it, um, and your folder will get crinkly if you never used diamond press before. And I reuse them and reuse them my folders look like this and I just keep flipping them around flipping them around uh, and they one I had for years upon years so I'll just flip this and I'll stick it in with the rest of mine so I'm gonna pop this through and what's really nice Diamond Press has a lot of detail on their uh, dies and this set is a perfect example of the detail that's on these dies. 
Now you could save these pieces and like paper piece them and do a card that way, which I thought would be kind of cute, but not today. I'm not going to show that. Uh, so I'm going to just, just th throw these away because I save a lot of scraps and then I have to go through it every once in a while and like, why did I save all these? So, and uh, all thin metal dies go through the Marquise. This is my second Marquise uh, that I machine that I had. I love it, and I that my very first one lasted a very very long time. So you got when you make sure that you have everything cleaned out in here. And then there will be little marks in here, like little ones that stay stuck. Make sure you clean those out. Uh, so the next time you use it, that uh, you, it will fully cut it because if the holes are packed full of uh, paper, it's not gonna cut. So that's that. Okay, let me get my little sweeper. And my sweeper I got from all these works great. Okay, so I'm going to keep this as a dark background and put this on top. And as you and I'm going to keep this as a flat card. So I'm going to have a little margin around it and everything and um, keep it like that. So I'm going to set this off to the side. And I already pre-cut out the pieces that I wanted. This car, this is um, watercolor paper with three GSM. I think I got this at five below, but the, the paper is five and a half by eight and a half. So if you slice this paper in half, it makes two card fronts for an A2. And I love this paper because water, um, painting with it with watercolors, it really does nice. I That's why I kind of use it all the time. So I laid out my pieces and ran it through my spell binder on one whack. And uh, the owl, I want a background on it, but I tried, I kept the beak in there, but I want to glue something on like the this in the background. So I just traced around this with a uh, pencil and I'm not going to um, I'm not going to I'm going to go inside the line well actually this I, I can cut the feet off and I can go and cut that wing off too I just need something to um, fill in where the holes are because that's the way I want to make mine and I think I'm going to have to keep up here because you don't need a just it's just that you want to hold your whatever pieces that you want to uh, keep on uh, the owl. You'll see depending what paper you have. Um, it could possibly if it's thinner paper like cardstock, it might fall out and you'll just have to paper piece them in. Or leave it the way it is. It doesn't matter. So this way I have a background to to uh, put on there. I just want to show you that before it gets started too. Okay. So what I want to do is get my watercolor. I'm going to use this. And I'm laying this out. And... What I want to do is um, do the background first. So, uh, since the chameleon co colors, I kept looking, I want it as a night scenery. So, I'm just going to take my black right now. And I think I'm going to use one of my new brushes because I need something. Uh, I filled these up already. I need something wide to do this and 
I'm going to probably use this dark blue because it will look like a night sky. And I'm going to take my spritz bottle again and just spritz that. You just have to, one little spritz. And then I'm going to squeeze my water brush to fill up the, the bristles with water. It's taking a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to get my paper towel because I'll be wiping my paper towel. And I'm just going to see how I have a water there already. I'm just going to go across, just making swooshy lines. And this will give you your your night sky. And I'm going like a, across the horizon. I was thinking about maybe adding purple into it too, because I want it to look a little more like an October look. Looks like I'm getting more pigment at the top. I'm going to flip this around. And it will bow your card. It, once it dries, you'll just glue it flat. But it's because uh, it makes it uh, wet. And I'm going to flip my card over. And... I'm gonna look for that. I'm looking for the shimmer because of this, but I think I'm going to go with this purple, purple shimmer. So I flip my tray around to figure out. This is what's good to have swatches, but this is on white cardstock, so it's gonna turn a little bit different. So I, I'll be going down to the purple and one little spritz in there. And I'm gonna pick up the purple. And I'm gonna flip this around. I'm gonna start here. And I'm not gonna do it as much. I'm just gonna hit it every so often just to add a touch of purple in the sky. And you'll see that once it dries, it already has a shimmer look to it. And you don't need much uh, paint because like you'll, you get to see there's a lot of colors on that already. Okay, so uh, the way that I clean the brush, see it's coming out clean, but it, the brush is stained, but that's fine. I told you it's not gonna affect anything with your painting and everything. So I'm gonna store that back up. Then, I wanted it to look starry looking with uh, stars. So I'm trying to figure out, I don't know if I want, I think I'm gonna use this light gold because this is uh, with the shimmer too. So I'm looking through my brushes and I wanna find the fine tip one. Uh, let me know, um, I think it's this one. And you'll be able to see, like right there it is, okay. So, um, I'll fill this one up by squeezing. Oh, that one came out faster. Okay, so I'll spritz this in a little bit. And I just spritz, you can spritz the whole thing and it dries that it will be okay. So I'm gonna mix this up a little bit. And to get the star effect, I'm just gonna hold my finger and uh, tap. See how it's, so I'm gonna move around here. And this is why it's good to have this mat because it, of it spritzing out. And once it dries, you're gonna see, and you can do as much as you want and it will give uh, whatever the starry night you want it to look like. And I'm just squeezing a little bit um, with the bottom of the barrel and tapping it down. So it creates a water drizzle effect. 
and it droplets and there's your starry night and you see how it like it shimmers with the in the, the light okay so now that I have my sky finished I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna move on to the trees so I'm just gonna wipe this up a little bit it doesn't matter because this is the back of the trees and since this is watercolor I'm gonna use this uh, thin brush but I'm going to go since I know this colors I think I'm gonna stick with the silver and maybe no I'm gonna go with gray I'm gonna keep the shimmers for the sky I'm gonna go gray so I might as well just spray them all and when I if I don't use them so I'm gonna lighten my brush up in here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like swoosh in to the to make it look give it like a little more dimension on the and like I said painting is like relaxing to me and this is why I love doing it and I'm just going down making squiggly lines and see how it's starting to make the tree look like it has dimension and you can go back over it nothing's perfect so you'll learn that you know and if you make a mistake you can go back and take a paper towel and lift it up because it's okay and it will keep the color and everything and even that it's smoothed and rounded off it uh really is the walk watercolor paper still is taking into it and because this one's in the background i'm gonna take this a little bit darker and I'm, like i said i can sit and paint <laughs> for hours just playing because it relaxes me and puts me into another place <laughs> And I, sometimes I just like to watch people paint too and enjoy it, the, what they're creating. And I'm just putting it on the trees. I'm not going to do it on my border here because I only want the trees to have the illusion. Sort of looks like birch trees in a way. But Diamond Press, with um, when you see the detail on the mushrooms and that, um, it's going to be so easier to paint with it because of um, the way the impression of the dye with all the detail on it. It is really nice. just going down through so if you've got the today's special value I I hope you go out and just play and just take it on a trip with you and you just want some time to relax because I know I'm, not, I'm starting to get away from TV too much I don't know I just I just like to have peace in my mind and this this seems to be the thing that the crafting with the, the card making and paper things that I'm making and doing these videos being on the positive side and enjoying life the way it is 
Try not to let things stress me out. As you see, it's starting to take, um, you, you can see that it is starting to look more of a, like a woodsy look. And all I'm doing is going along the edges here. And I'm just dipping my brush and squeezing it a little bit to lighten it out. And this is how easy it is. It's like tracing and uh, following in a coloring book, but you're making your own pattern. I did see this is sold out and along with them alphabets. Oh, I could just can't believe how quick that went. I knew they were gonna go and I just left it, wait it until 2.30 in the morning I woke up. And that's when I was like, oh, I forgot to put my order in. And then it was too late. So then I thought, well, I'll just order the regular ones. Well, then we're gone too. I couldn't, I couldn't get them. And I know several people missed them. Uh, and I do know that if once before, Diamond Press did bring uh, back um, dies on their site, on my Diamond Press. And if a lot of people request for it. So if you go onto the Diamond Press site and go on their customer service, Judy is excellent with getting back to you about it if there's enough people that want the interest for it uh they might check into it and bring it back i'd want the auto ship though that i definitely want that auto ship but I, off of hsn i don't know if they will bring it back because of it being an exclusive item and that it's better to get it off a of diamond press to go from there okay so there's where i got that now what I want to do is I want to dip in and put some dark ones in between the middle here. So, um, cause you know how birch trees are too. They're, they have like the, the bark's peeling. I remember as a little kid, I used to peel the bark off our, our birch trees. I thought it was, it was like they were peeling their skin off. And my mother would always say, well, my mom would go, don't, you'll kill our trees. But as a kid, you're like, oh, this is fun. You know, you got to do this. This is fun. Now, if you want to pick up some color here, too, just remember, you can dab it with your uh, towel, your paper towel or sponge. And there we go. So there the trees are done. And that was really quick. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to let that dry. And I'm going to go on to the, the next thing. And I'm going to put that up here with this. Okay, so the mushroom had two pieces. And like I said, I don't know if you can see the detail on it, but it's really cool. And it has a topper to add more layers. Uh, this was the small one. And then this was the, the other size. This one had, looks like Swiss cheese that goes layers on top of it and everything. And then the pumpkin has a topper that you put on for the stem. And like I said, you can really see the details. Once I hit this with uh, the watercolor, you're going to be able to see it. And I decided to put two um, pieces of greenery, like vining from the pumpkin. And then the owl, like I said, I had to cut the bottom piece here. And then I saved the, the holes from this. And I might piece them onto this to give it more dimension. I don't know if I'm gonna color these or not though. I'm still in my mind what I'm doing. Oops. Okay, so the first one that I'm gonna work with is I'm gonna work on the pumpkin. 
Now I'm going to show you, remember the sponge? Uh, I cut mine into a wedge and this bag, I saved the bag because it's resealable and it is keeping it moist and everything. I did wash it out, but it uh, seemed to stain just a little bit. Maybe I didn't wash it out good enough neither, but that's okay. I, I'm Like I said, it's no, it's, see, it's not marking. And this way you can do it you know, whatever you want to do with it. So what I first, what I want to do is I want to uh, dip into my orange and I'm just going to pounce on here to make the pumpkin have a little bit of texture like a pumpkin does because pumpkins are not smooth and it adds plenty of color on here and it it's, and it shows the detail on that too, yeah. So I'm gonna keep that there. And then I'm gonna go with, um, I might go with this raw sienna and my fine brush and go around the top and go this way just to follow in them cracks where the pumpkin is wedged down. And it, this, this is how you get your finer details and everything with it. And I'm just gonna go around the edges too. I'm not putting no color on, I'm just blending it in. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take the orange again and I'm gonna flick up around to darken the bottom. And I'm using the fine uh, brush here. And I'm gonna take it up the top too, because um, you wanna make sure that um, it looks round it uh, by keeping the center brighter. And it's still keeping the texture on my um, sponge that I did, the sponging. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the brown to make it look like it's rounded to where the creases are in the pumpkin. And it adds more like depth into it. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to blotch in the middle again and see how it like gives it that more rounded look. Okay, clean out my brush by just squeezing and pulling it out. And then I'm going to make the stem, uh, I'm gonna go do with this lighter green. And because these pieces are really like delicate. And I'm going to take a darker green and dab at the bottom here. Because this is wet yet. And go up along the one side. Okay. I'm going to let that one dry over here. Put that out of my way. And since I'm on the green, I'm going to do the vines. Now then I'm going to get a different brush. Uh, okay, let me squeeze. Yeah, the round ones seem to come out faster. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the light green and I'm just gonna brush it all, all over. And some are gonna, I'm gonna let it like a little white like not completely cover it 
Same way with this one. Now I'm gonna come in with it. I'm not even gonna take my brush. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna go out here like this. And do this. And I'm gonna just keep following along my vine and then keep just blending them together because it will, and there's no, um, can't put too much color on. You can always take the color back out when you just dab it with water and see how it makes it more look like um, natural. In nature there's nothing perfect everything god has created has been of his own doing beautiful here i think i'm going to take this teal yet and add into it because i i like that color just to add a little bit more green a different texture green I could do the veining too every so often. There we go. So, did everybody get their um, craft supplies that they did on the for craft day? And did you just get to look at them? Also, another thing. Make sure you open up everything. Don't let it sit. I uh, always inspect everything because I had stamps set. I already got two sets of stamps. And I have called in some, um, markers. I got two alike. So just make sure you check it before you, um, you know, don't let it sit for a couple of months to um, check your stuff because... Uh, you can contact them right away. So if stuff is in supply, they will just tell you to mail it back and they'll get you a new one. They tell you to hold it until it comes and then uh, they'll mail you a new one. If not, sometimes uh, Diamond Press has extra, because um, with the markers, Diamond Press had uh, extra markers and Judy just mailed me the one marker and I asked her if she wanted me to mail back the other one that I had that was alike and they told me to keep it because um, you know they're, they're good this company is a really good company I just wanted to let you know okay so this mushroom I was thinking about doing it in uh, maybe like a purple because I, you know me, I love purple. I just couldn't remember. I should go with the light color purple. Or maybe I should go with the base of a dark purple. Okay, let's do that. We'll do that in dark color. And but I'll, I'll lighten it up then. Oh, it got blue. Look at that. That's in the wrong thing. So, so now you can see what happens. So you just wet that down. This is good that you get to see. You went and dipped in the wrong color. This is the darker purple. Now you see how it's filling in with the texture. Where the veining and everything is. And that did it real quick that you, you don't even have to like shadow it yourself. And this piece is gonna go over. So this one I'm gonna do in the light purple, but I'm gonna do it in a shimmery. That's what I'm looking at my colors here. I might do it in the perwinkle. So it, uh, shimmers oh it looks the same though don't it i 
Maybe I better go with this one. And I'm just blotting it on here because this is wet and going to put it on the edges here because I know that's going to come over but see I'm going to just take it around and it's going to fall into them lines too and I'm just dabbing it I'm not squeezing my pen or nothing and it's doing it itself I'm going to add a little bit of shadow down the side here There we go. Okay. I'm just setting these pieces off to the side so they dry. I think I'm going to put the dots on that, though. Okay, so this one, I'm thinking I'm going to let, like, a creamy color. So... I was thinking about doing it in teal. Because <laughs> I like that teal. You know what? I guess I will do one teal. So it's this one. I'm going to do teal and red. See how that turns out. Can shut all down here again too. I decided I was going to work on this today. We've been getting rain on and off the last couple. Well, <clears throat> Wednesday, or Thursday, and uh, Friday we went on our bicycles. Or we go to um, the rail trails, and we did 20 miles. I love the I love our e-bikes. I if I didn't have an e-bike, I wouldn't be able to go that far. But I just love that bike, and uh, we always find such cool things to see. And uh, we were in Cornwell, Pennsylvania, and we started out at this root beer barrel place. Um, and then we went over to the, it was, uh, the iron, oh, I'm trying to, iron furnace, and it was like a little town built back in 1742. And it was really interesting, the, the smokehouse and the, uh, what was it? The smokehouse and the butcher shop looked like a church. And I first I thought it was a church until I saw the signs of it and everything. And I'm going to feather this in here like this. Play with it. Okay. So this one, I think I'm going to make red. Will that look red? Hmm. Or should I go with fuchsia? I'll go with fuchsia. I'm going wild here now. <laughs> Anyways, um... It was really interesting to see how they um, melded iron. And uh, 
the, sh the place was shut down. It wasn't open. I guess they have it only open for weekends and that. But the trail was really nice. It was like macadam some parts, and then it was cracker dust. And uh, we've been up to Jim Thorpe, which we have tickets to go on the train up there. They take our bikes up to Whitehaven and then uh, drop us off, and then we pedal back to Jim Thorpe. And I really enjoy going up there, too. Okay, so I'm going to add some texture on here. I'm going to take a little bit off in here. I'm just going to... There we go. That adds a little texture for it. Okay, so... I can't decide if I want to paint this yellow in the background, which I think that's what I'll do. I'm going to paint this yellow. Let me make sure I got my brush clean. And it gets, on the weekends up at Jim Thorpe, it gets full. We've done that several times going up there to Jim Thorpe. The reason I'm just going to swish you around here, because not all this is going to show. Just need to dry. Now, this, I'm going to show you a different technique. This is going to be... You know what? Really, maybe I'll move it in here. This way you can see. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick up different colors. Um, and I'm going to just blotch them down. I might stay with uh, this orange shimmer. And then I'm going to show you what I'm doing with it. Okay. And I might go with this. This one. Down here. And. This says it's mauve. But it don't look mauve. Now you want to watch you don't muddy them up neither because uh, paints the paints will mu uh, get muddy. Like like that. Hmm. See how it's getting like muddy looking. Mm, put this pink in here. And I'll put this blue shimmer in here, too. Put that there. Okay. So, the smooth side is facing us right now. And then this is the back side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this in here. And I'm going to tap it down. And I want it like a rainbow look. See? And... I'm going to go up here and see how it muddied it up a little bit, but that's okay. What I'll do is I'll just touch it up with uh, different colors. So I'll add like a little bit of blue in here. Sometimes I can do better with uh, the crayon markers, but I want it to be like a, a different look. Uh, not like a straight colored look. But now this is all wet. So now I can just start blending in the colors too. And it will give you a different look. Right here. Get this orange in here. And maybe some down here. And go with the green in here. And maybe a little bit over here. And I'm 
gonna go with this blue. Oh, I did have that blue, okay. What's this color? That's red shimmer. Oh, let's try that. It's sort of muting it out. It's like a pastel-y looking. Mm. I'm trying to decide what color I want next. What's this? This is turquoise. Ooh, that's pretty. Let's do that up here. Okay, so for the beak, I think I'm going to go with um, this bright orange. I'm just going to touch in there. I'm going to leave his eyes white. Let me put another color in there. I'll try this gold. Right here. some gold in here too. There you go. And that gives you a pastel look. Okay. So that was pretty easy to put together like that. And like I said, <clears throat> your brush is good here. And whatever I've left over, I keep my water in here because it doesn't uh, do anything. And I'm just going to take my wet cloth, wipe this up, and wipe this up with the white cloth. It cleans real easy, it looks like. <clears throat> I'm going to put this in here and close this up because I think I'm done painting, but I won't put it too far. Okay. So, I'm going to try to piece and glue these together. Okay. Okay, so it is uh, crinkled and everything. Um, so basically, I just take and my fingers and go and turtle it like this to unfold it. But now do you see the shimmer of the blue and the purple and then the stars? So now I want to make sure, I don't know if I want to make this, oh yeah, that looks good that way though. But I want to make sure which one I'm going to do for the top and the bottom. Oh, I like that too. Hmm. Okay, I'll leave it like this. Okay, so I'm going to take my glue and my card, my A2 card. This came with uh, the Today Special from last month. And I, I can't believe how many cards stock they gave us. Uh, I'm just going to put glue on it. Maybe. And I pulled my tab out again. I can't get, I think I have too much glue in there. and But that's okay, I'm still using it this way. So I'm going not all the way to the edge, but up and down. I can get the, it back in. It's just that there's there's a lot of glue in there, and I just didn't play to get it loose. But it goes back in the hole, and it's working, <coughs> so I'm using it. So <clears throat> here we go. <clears throat> I must be talking too much. So I lay my card down on the bottom. <clears throat> and I line it up this way. That, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> that way, it lines up with my card. And with this glue, you have a little bit of maneuver time. It doesn't grab right away. Now, if I see that there's a little bit of overhang, I will trim it on the back side. 
because uh, sometimes they're not fully, uh, I don't know, like right, straight, whatever. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, every time I talk longer, I get, I get a horse at my throat. Put that like that. I'm going to get the fine tip glue. This one. Staying stuck for me now, too. Oh, great. I'm going to have to use this, too, like this. And you know what? I'm just going to go like this. Put it on my arm. <clears throat> that way I don't get too much glue on it. And it will be easier to manage it. I can see where I missed some spots. I don't know, I've been having problems with this staying, the tip staying in. <clears throat> My fine one wasn't doing it before. <clears throat> <coughs> and now it is. So I'm going to lay this on here like this. Line it up the best I can. Push that down. And I'm going to glue this one down. Might as well just keep this here. Let's have all this glue on me. I like the way this out turned out. This turned out pretty cute. And what's really nice is it holds the eyebrows and the beacon. Doing it this way. I'm going to glue this on to there. Let's see how nice it comes together. And you know what? I'm going to have to glue my hand again. And my tweezers. This one's finer. To put this on top. Seems like this watercolor is uh, dries quick on the paper too. I'm just trying to get all the pieces glued together. Way better this way for me sometimes. See that? And what I'm thinking is I'm going to take a couple dots and stick them on there. Whoops. He wasn't stuck. He went right on me. a little bit of difference. I'll take a little one here. And put him down here. <clears throat> one more. him yet. 
take him over. Maybe I'll put him at the top like that. Show me this one. Nope, he's stuck already. All right. Well, that still looks good, I think. <coughs> okay. So what I was planning on doing was putting the pumpkin to the side and putting the owl over here. And maybe this here. this up a little bit. Not like that. I don't know, this seems so bold. I mean, I need to take some color out of this um, purple. So I'm just taking the brush and I'm just going to re-wet this. And I'm going to try to lift this color out a little bit. Maybe even in here a little bit. There we go. I thought that was too dark for me anyways. keep that out now give me a minute I got to figure out how I'm going to stick that I, I know what I want to do but I just got to figure out how to transfer it I'll show you in a minute <laughs> okay I glued the I glued this down and just uh, put the block on top I couldn't figure out how I want it to uh, do the stick it up but it didn't work the way I was planning so I just did it laid one down and gone from there okay so now I want to put the sentiment one and um, I'm gonna show you I buy this uh, foam adhesive in uh, the craft section where they have for the kids I use this all the time uh, I use it because it adds just a little bit of dimension, but I also make stamps just from dies onto it. So first I'm going to cut out the words and I'm going to show you this and then I'm going to show you, I'll make an owl stamp and then I'll show you how it will turn out uh, to stamp with. So give me a minute to cut this out. And I'll be right back with that. Okay, I ran it through the, I ran everything through uh, the die cutter. And when you do these, uh, you want to make sure that the uh, backing stays on. Uh, with the, it's a little touchy when you're pulling this out. So you want to be really careful because you can tear it tear the foam and you just want to go slow because especially with all the detail on these see how this one uh, that came off and then I'll just pop it through the bottom with the foam to get the sender letters out it's just easier to do it this way so it don't get stuck on the back of your your foam and you're fighting with it that way. Let me pull this one. And I decided to use Happy uh, 
fall. So I'm going to keep the backing on there until I get happy apart. And I just push up from the inside or like from the bottom and tug a little bit that I, I loosen myself away without tearing the foam. Same way here. And I rather do this, then this way you don't have to layer papers and you don't have to glue, it's already sticky. And this foam, funny, or fun foam or whatever it comes in, um, sheets like this. So I think it's like five by seven or maybe, maybe a little bit bigger. So like I said, you just pop from the bot, the back up. That way you can get the holes of this stuff out. And it really, does, it, it um, adds a lot of, not a lot of dimension, but it, it gives it a little bit of a pop. And it's easy, it, you can still, it's mailable. So you don't have to worry about, you know, not being able to, that you pay for extra postage with it because it doesn't add that much of a dimension. Okay, one more, okay. All right, so the next thing is I try to decide where I'm placing them before I peel it. So I wanna have this as happy fall. So what I'll do is I, I will hold, try to hold it. This takes a lot of patience sometimes and just pull slightly. Now see some of the papers are stuck in there, the, the backing. So I've tried to get that out also because you, you want to keep that cleaned out. It's just in these two little ones. And this gets like all wonky if uh, you go pull it. So like I said, you have to be really delicate with it. And if you don't have patience for it, then layer up the layers with um, paper. It's just I have patience to work with it like this. So I'll keep it on my finger and then I'll gently lay it down to where I want it. And I will not press it down until I have it in the placement that I want it. And that looks pretty good right there. And then I'll do the same thing with the, the fall. Pull the backing off. And you can see there the papers are, because if you take it to the back, it just tends to stick to these, uh, the glue on here. And there we go. It just takes a few minutes and patience to pop it all through. Okay, now see how my L went and got funky onto my A? So if you have little tweezers, you can manipulate it like that too. So I try to keep the late the uh, them in. Do I want to go over here? Happy fall. Do I want to go in here? Hmm. I can't make up my mind. Kind of looks nice there. We'll keep it all in line, or keep it in the center there. Yeah, right there, it looks good. Okay, so right there, uh, using your watercolors, uh, the water color paper, and uh, these new paints. Got a, a night sky for a happy fall. I love. This is sort of reminds me of tie-dye. I'm a tie-dye girl too. I love tie-dye. So that finishes the card. Now, as you see here, I did cut the owl out, but there's a lot of detail on the owl. So what I will do is I will pull it up gently. Now, <clears throat> you can leave these bits in here if you want. And I will show you how it looks when you stamp it. I'm going to grab a piece of paper or a cardstock, just a scrap piece, 
and now it's going to be the opposite and i will pull the backing off of of uh the foam and the bits are going to stay stuck on there so maybe that would be easier to get it off the foam or off there i'm going to put this here and put it on it might look pretty cool too so what i'll do is Uh, let's do it in black. Well, I'll do it in the, this. So I will just go over this by dabbing it with ink. And you can also do a background with it. Press down, see? Again, second image. And that's how I make um, stamps out of just when you have dyes and it's easy. You can easily make a, a nice background with this. The leaves would probably look good with this in uh, the dyes. And then I just take and peel this up. Sometimes it's a little sticky to get back up and there you have that and then if you save the backs of these these aren't sticky I mean are you gonna stick your it on and then reuse it again and again so that just gives you an idea of how to make a stamp out of your dies and get a background out of it and it like I said it's really easy to do and I hope you enjoyed it today with uh, the watercolors and teaching you about the stamps and try it and uh, see what you can come up with because it's fun to experiment with it well, thanks for watching and liking and subscribing. Um, again, thank you for liking. It is helping me out greatly and um, keeping me happy. <laughs> um, so until next time, I will see you us crafting again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.